Even as Putin continues to push into Ukraine and kill civilians, the world is uniting to fight back. Today, the International Court of Justice in The Hague ordered Russia to halt its invasion of Ukraine. So, you know, that should get results quickly. And here in the U.S., the Senate is advancing a bill that would give ordinary people a reward for snitching on oligarchs and helping to identify their assets. Yeah. So you snitch, you find an oligarch, and you get money. Which is really interesting, and it's probably gonna mark the first time that people are gonna call the cops like, hey, 911, I just saw a very suspicious yacht sailing by, and look, some of my best friends have yachts, but there's something fishy about this one. Yeah, I'm in danger. Also, yesterday, the White House announced that President Biden himself will travel to Europe next week for a series of diplomatic meetings with other NATO leaders. And in response to that, Donald Trump Jr., yeah, remember him? He tweeted that his dad should go instead, saying, quote, if you want to get something done right, send Trump. Which I actually agree with. Yeah. If your goal is to confuse the hell out of everyone in Europe, send Trump. That'll definitely stop the war. Russia is stealing Ukraine's land, just like Black Lives Matter stole the voting machines and the toilets. They don't flush anymore. They don't flush! And that's why we gotta ban windmills. Gotta get rid of all of them. Now, Vladimir Putin is not happy about any of this. In fact, today, he gave a speech in which he complained that the West is trying to cancel Russia. Yeah, which is pretty rich coming from this dude. A man is over here as the only person in history who's ever sent an army to kill a comedian. And guys, can we agree? Can we agree that the term cancel has lost all meaning? Right? Because first, canceling meant that people were getting mad at you for what you said online. Now you're being canceled if people don't want you to invade other countries? I feel like we're a few months away from archaeologists being like, and then 66 million years ago, a giant asteroid hit the Earth and canceled all the dinosaurs. Hashtag woke. But the big news today is about Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and his speech to the United States. Yeah, appearing live via satellite in Congress's home theater, Zelensky pleaded with the U.S. to send more weapons and enforce a no-fly zone over Ukraine. And based on his references to American history, it was clear that Zelensky knew his audience. I remember your national memorial in Rushmore, the faces of your prominent presidents, those who laid the foundation of the United States of America as it is today. Remember Pearl Harbor, terrible morning of December 7, 1941, when your sky was black from the planes attacking you. Remember September the 11th, a terrible day. Our country experience the same every day. I have a dream. These words are known to each of you today. I can say, I have a need. I need to protect uh, our sky. I need your decision, your help, which means exactly the same, the same you feel when you hear the words, I have a dream. Yeah, that's right. Zelensky brought out all of America's major moments. I have a dream, 9-11, Mount Rushmore. You know he was on Wikipedia last night planning this out. Okay, Pearl Harbor. Boston Tea Party. Should I mention Hulk Hogan's sex tape? Maybe? And by the way, props to him. I mean, he knows way more about America than most U.S. senators know about his country. Like, can you imagine how they would sound if they had to give an inspiring speech using Ukrainian history? Uh, people of Ukraine, remember the vision of your founder. I wanna say Daniel Ukraine? I'm also impressed that Zelensky was able to dodge so many landmines in his research. Because you realize this could have gone very wrong. And now to 9-11, which, as we all know from YouTube, was inside job. I see you, Bush. No, for real? It was a really impressive speech. Although, you know, these days, people on Twitter will complain about literally anything. So, of course, there was one economist who tweeted, I understand times are hard, but doesn't the president of Ukraine own a suit? Damn. What a weird criticism. This is the kind of guy who'd see Jesus come back and be like, really? Sandals, my guy? But anyway, most people were impressed by the speech, especially the powerful ending when Zelensky switched to English and addressed President Biden directly. Today, the Ukrainian people 
are defending not only Ukraine, we are fighting for the values of Europe and the world. And as the leader of my niche, I am addressing the President Biden. You are the leader of the niche of your great nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Thank you. Slava Ukraine. That was inspiring. I'm pretty sure that was the first time in history people applauded a Zoom call. It's also impressive that Zelensky was able to deliver that message in his non-native tongue. In fact, when you think about it, his English is better than the past two U.S. presidents. And also, how rare is it? How rare is it to see everyone in Congress all stand and applaud for the same thing, right? You never see that. I mean, obviously, almost everyone, almost everyone. Because I, I don't know if you noticed that one congressman who, I guess, didn't realize that everyone else was doing a standing ovation? My man, we're on the brink of nuclear conflict. You can fill out your bracket later. Now, it doesn't look like America is going to support a no-fly zone over Ukraine anytime soon, because, again, a direct confrontation between American jets and Russian jets, that could end up spiraling into World War III. And that's a sequel that nobody wants, except for maybe the History Channel. Yeah, you think they want to be talking about aliens and shit? They hate it as much as you do. But America's government has been ratcheting up its support in other ways. Today, Biden announced that America would be sending another $800 million worth of military aid to Ukraine. And aside from the American government, the American people have also taken it upon themselves to step up and help Ukraine. And I'm not just talking about the usual ways, by the way, like donating money and putting a Ukrainian flag in their Twitter handle. And don't get me wrong, the flag emoji is making a huge difference. But people are also finding more creative ways to help out. Inspired by these images of Ukrainians displaced by the invasion of their country, Americans are finding inventive ways to help. Turning pain into purpose, Sasha Shmurkovsky created an Amazon wish list of items needed in Ukraine. The response, overwhelming. One truck after another dropping off donated goods, 40,000 and counting. People are booking Airbnbs in Ukraine with no plans of staying there. The initiative, which gained popularity on social media, is a way to get money to Ukrainians impacted by the war. More than 61,000 nights were booked in just 48 hours, raising almost $2 million for hosts in Ukraine. Two Harvard University students are doing their part to help Ukrainian refugees find homes around the world. They have launched this website, ukrainetakeshelter.com. It's designed to help refugees find hosts with spare rooms, condos, and dormitories. Wow, people, that is heartwarming, huh? These two students are helping thousands of Ukrainian refugees find places to stay. That's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, we, we should keep in mind, though, that the website was built by Harvard students in their dorm room. So a few years from now, it'll probably lead to an attempted coup. But for now, it's all good times. And I also love that people are renting Airbnbs in Ukraine, but not staying there. They're just doing it to send money to Ukrainians who are in need. That's one of the coolest initiatives I've ever seen. Although I hope everyone understands that this is just a donation, okay? Because you know there's gonna be one guy who actually shows up just being like, really disappointed, Wi-Fi was spotty, and sound of missiles exploding kept me up all night. Two stars. And it turns out, Americans aren't just helping refugees and ordinary civilians. No, they're also directly contributing to the war efforts. A company in Wisconsin is donating a million rounds of ammunition to Ukrainian forces. The company's close ties with the U.S. military makes workers confident the ammunition will get to where it is needed most. A growing number of police agencies across the U.S. are jumping in to support Ukrainians with combat supplies. This box full of gear used to be for law enforcement in Colorado. Soon, it will be sent to protect people a world away. The Cincinnati Police Department is pitching in to help Ukraine defend itself against Russia. It is sending 950 ballistic helmets to people fighting to defend their country. One New York County executive's organizing a collection drive for guns, asking gun owners to donate their weapons for the cause. We could get a million guns to the people of the Ukraine. The Ukrainian people want to protect themselves. So let's give them the resources to do that. Now, that's what I'm talking about. 
America's police forces are sending their military-grade hardware to help Ukrainians fight a war in Russia. That's dope. And if you're asking, wait, why do our police have things that you can use in a war? You're not asking the right questions! The question you should be asking is, at what point does America realize it has too many guns? Because you realize, that, that guy just said, we can get a million guns and we can send them to. That's when you know your country <laughs> has too many weapons, is when another country needs weapons and everyday people in America are like, yeah, we can give them the spare Glock in the guest room, honey. But I guess this is just a beautiful example of how an ecosystem can balance itself. You know, one country's problems can be another country's solution. America has too many guns and an over-militarized police force? Send it over to Ukraine. Hell, throw in some mass shooters, too. Go get them, Tyler. Hakuna Matata. But look, whether or not it says something terrifying about the states of America, it is still a nice gesture for Americans to be donating their own weapons and their gear to Ukraine. Still, for some Americans, sending guns just isn't good enough. No, they're also volunteering to be the ones shooting them. Ukraine's government has actively recruited foreigners to join the fight. Over 20,000 have reportedly expressed interest, and many Americans are showing up daily. Harrison Josephowitz is 25 and was a Chicago police officer. Harrison spent five years in the U.S. Army and did a tour in Afghanistan. You just quit your job and got on a plane? Pretty much. Why? This the right thing to do. Dennis Diaz is a former Marine. When he watched Russian tanks pulling into southern Ukraine, his gut said he had to do something. As Americans, we take on the big bullies, and right now, um, Russia is the big bully. Their resumes range from combat experience to no military training at all. I worked at a, a place called Taco Bell. It's a fast food restaurant in the U.S. I did something similar um, when I was 19. I went to um, Iraq to join up with the Abishé. I saw everything that was happening here. I just decided to take that, uh, take that money. I have a plane ticket and come out here. Yeah, you heard that right. This guy left his job at Taco Bell to go and fight the Russians. And I'll tell you now, he's got way more balls than me. I also think he's got the perfect experience for war. If you've worked at a drive-thru, you've already seen the worst of humanity. You've also probably gained a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat training. Shit, have you seen what people do at 3 a.m.? But yes, thousands of people around the world, including many Americans, are heading to Ukraine to join up with the Ukrainian resistance. And these people are heroes. They're heroes, no doubt. But I think we can also admit it's probably a few of them who made this decision partly because of COVID. I don't care where it is. I just want to travel again. Yo, but seriously, good luck to all these people who are risking their own lives to go and defend democracy. And don't forget, you're headed into an active war zone, so please remember to pack a suit, 